everyone. I hope you've had a chance to practice this combustion analysis problem, and let's see if we got it right. So remember that this is a combustion analysis. So this is one of our five basic reaction types. And with our five basic reaction types, hydrocarbon plus oxygen always produces CO2 and water. So in this case, we're given the grams of CO2 and we're given the grams of water produced. Now we need the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen in order to, to determine the empirical formula. So if we look at this equation, remembering conservation of mass, all the grams of carbon in CO2 come from the hydrocarbon. And the same thing here, all the grams of hydrogen in H2O come from the hydrocarbon. That's not the case with the oxygen because we have some oxygen here. But we can get the grams of carbon from CO2 and the grams of hydrogen from H2O and we can continue with determining the empirical formula. Let's see how we would do that. Well, to get the grams of carbon from grams of CO2, we're going to use our little road map to help us. So we are starting with the grams of the compound here and we would go through molar mass to get the moles of the compound and then our subscript conversion factor to get the moles of the element and then molar mass again to get the grams of the element. We're going to do that both with our carbon dioxide to grams of carbon and our grams of water to grams of hydrogen. That's the exact same thing that we had done before in class that we had practiced. So let's see how you would have done that. You would have started off with the 66.0 grams of CO2, and then we would go through our conversion factors. So we have to make sure my units cancel, and I'm using molar mass, so you remember that molar mass comes from the periodic table. So we would look up our molar mass for CO2, so that's one carbon and two oxygens that we would have to add up together. And in this case, I'm only going to use a tenth for molar mass, but it would be better if you used more decimals. So we would have to put grams of CO2 on the bottom because you know our units have to cancel, and it's always one mole of the same substance CO2. That's our molar mass conversion factor. Yep, and my units cancel, so let's keep going. So now I've got moles of CO2 on top, so I know I have to write moles of CO2 on the bottom. And in this case, we're using our subscript conversion factor. So I would have to use the subscript conversion factor, and I want moles of carbon. So I look at the subscript for C, and I see that it's 1. And in our subscript conversion factor, it's always 1 mole of the compound. And then I'm going to go on to do molar mass. So I've got moles of carbon on top, so I need to put moles of carbon on the bottom. And then we're going to change that to grams of carbon. Again, that comes from the periodic table. It's always the grams, in this case 12.0 grams of carbon in one mole of carbon. So you notice we've used molar mass twice, which is totally fine. But in one situation, we have the grams of CO2 on the bottom, and in the next case we have grams of carbon on the top, which is fine because our units have to cancel, and that's why we do that. So let's double check our units. So I've got grams of CO2. Yep, that cancels with grams of CO2. Okay. I've got moles of CO2 canceling with moles of CO2. Yep. Moles of carbon canceling with moles of carbon. Yep. So I'm left with grams of carbon. So that's what my answer will come out to be, is in grams of carbon. In this case, it would be 18 0.0 grams of carbon, and so we want to do the same thing with our grams of water. So this would be 40.5 grams of H2O. Okay, and we have to have our units cancel. If I've got grams of H2 on top, I have to put grams of H2O on the bottom, and I go to the periodic table, and that adds up to be 18.0 grams is always in one mole of water. And yes, my units are canceling, so I'm going in the right direction. Now I have moles of H2 on top, so I need to put moles of H2O on the bottom. And I'm using the subscript conversion factor, so this would be moles of hydrogen, which is the element, so I have to get the subscript for the element. So in this case, it's 2 
two moles of hydrogen always in one mole of the compound. So yes, my units cancel and keep going. I've got moles of hydrogen on top, so I need to put moles of hydrogen on the bottom. And I want grams of hydrogen, so this would be one mole. Now I'm going to put um, 1.0 grams of hydrogen, but we should again go more sig figs on that one. So our units cancel, so my answer comes out to be 4.5 grams of hydrogen. Now once I have that, then we can just continue just like we normally would with our grams, convert that to moles using molar mass, and then we divide by the smallest moles to give us the empirical formula. Totally fine. That's just how we would normally do it. But what if our compound has oxygen present? And in this case, this example does. So what do we need to do? We need to figure out well, how many grams of oxygen are there. So in this case, we had 34.5 grams of the sample. That's the total sample weight. So in that sample, I have grams of carbon present, grams of oxygen present, and grams of hydrogen present. Well, if I know the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen, can't I subtract that from my sample weight to give me the grams of oxygen? So let's do that. So that would be 34.5 grams is my sample weight minus our 18 grams for the carbon and minus our 4.5 grams for the hydrogen, what's left would be the grams of oxygen. So in this case, once I subtract that out, I would find that the grams of oxygen is going to be 12.0 grams of oxygen. So once I have that, then I can continue on to determine the empirical formula. And in that, I would just follow our roadmap that we've done before. I'm starting with grams of each element. I need to change that to moles of each element, and then determine the empirical formula. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. We've got the 18 grams of carbon, and I'm going to change that to moles. So this would be 12.0 grams of carbon on the bottom. The units have to cancel. One mole of carbon on the top, because that's molar mass, and it's always the grams in one mole. So I'm going to get 1.50 moles of carbon. Same thing with the hydrogen. I've got 4.5 grams of hydrogen. And let's put the grams of hydrogen on the bottom again, because units have to cancel. And I always know it's grams in one mole of hydrogen. It's the same substance. It comes from the periodic table. That's the molar mass conversion factor. And that equals 4.5 moles of hydrogen. OK, let's do oxygen. So we've got 12.0 grams of oxygen. And I'm going to do the same thing. 16 grams of oxygen is into one mole of oxygen. And that's going to be 0.75 moles of oxygen. Great. And the next step that we need to do in following our roadmap is we need to divide by the smallest moles. So in this case, it's 0.75 is the smallest moles. So I would divide each of these. 1.50 divided by 0.75. 4.5 divided by 0.75, and 0.75 divided by 0.75. OK, so this equals about 2. This one equals about 6. And this one is 1. So the empirical formula in this case would be C2H6 oxygen. There we go. And we're done.